Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, following yesterday's debate, I once again wish to thank Côte d'Ivoire for having proposed this open debate on the role of states, regional mechanisms and the United Nations in conflict prevention. Our world is faced with complex threats that are multidimensional, interconnected and unpredictable. The number of countries experiencing violent conflict is higher than it has been in 30 years. And low intensity conflicts have increased by 60% in the last 10 years. We have a responsibility to act, not in isolation, but collectively. Since assuming office, I have prioritized prevention of all kinds from conflict to natural disasters to pandemics and foreseeable dangers posed by new technology. There are complex links between these threats which can reinforce and amplify each other and should not be seen in isolation. And I have therefore called on all parts of the United Nations system to focus on prevention, including obviously as a priority for us, the prevention of conflict. We are overwhelmingly managing crises and conflicts when we should put far more effort into preventing them from happening in the first place. Rather than launching humanitarian aid operations to save lives, we should be in a position to invest in reducing the need for aid. Prevention is for us an end in itself, and it should never be seen as an instrument of any other political agenda. First and foremost, it saves lives and protects people from harm. But prevention also makes economic sense. The recent UN World Bank study, Pathways for Peace, concluded that prevention would save some 34 billion US dollars in damage in countries that avoid war. These benefits are compounded over time to reach over 140 billion after 15 years. From greater use of my good offices, including through my special representatives and envoys, to investing in mediation, to strengthening the contribution of peacekeeping and peace building to prevention, we are working to improve our capacity. The endorsement of the Action for Peacekeeping Initiative by 151 member states is a strong sign of support for the central role of our peacekeepers in preventing conflict from worsening and in proactively supporting peace. Mr. President, beyond the peace and security pillar, the entire United Nations system is tackling the root causes that can make communities and societies vulnerable to violence and conflict. These often lie in competition over the control of power and resources, inequality and exclusion, unmet aspirations, the marginalization of women, young people and minority groups, poor governance, and the instrumentalization of ethnic and religious divisions. They are interlinked and exacerbated by climate change, migration, transnational crimes, and global terrorism. All our work to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, from human rights and humanitarian affairs to gender equality, environmental protection and combating climate change as a role in preventing conflict. Sustainable development is an end in itself and must be considered as such, but it is also one of the most effective tools for prevention. Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals will make a significant contribution to tackling root causes and building lasting peace. While conflict between states has declined, internal conflicts are increasing and account for the majority of humanitarian needs and displacement around the world. Strong, resilient societies are enriched, not threatened by diversity. But such societies do not come about by chance. As societies become more multi-ethnic and multi-religious, cultural and economic investments in cohesion are vital. Every member, every group must feel valued. And we must also invest in education and training for young people so that they have hope and prospects for the future. Young women and men must be empowered to participate in making the decisions that affect their lives. This is a vital goal in itself, but it is also essential to counter the risk of alienation and susceptibility to extremist narratives and even recruitment. By the same token, we must invest in helping countries and communities that are emerging from conflict Justice, truth, and reconciliation are essential for societies to heal and move beyond war. The United Nations works to support such efforts in many countries and regions of the world. States, sub-regional, and regional organizations are our vital partners in all these efforts, and we are working together with respect and trust. 
Our relationship with the African Union is demonstrating the way forward through our frameworks for enhanced partnership for peace and security and the implementation of the Agenda 2063 and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And I'm delighted the African Union is here to discuss this important issue with us today. Mr. President, Chapter 8 of the United Nations Charter shows the visionary genius of those who drafted our foundational document. At the time, regional organizations barely existed. Seventy years on, regional and sub-regional organizations are an indispensable part of the rules-based global order. Chapter 8 even envisages our cooperation on joint peacekeeping operations. Regional and sub-regional organizations have the proximity, the experience, and the knowledge of local dynamics, the flexibility, and relationships to engage more rapidly and effectively when situations deteriorate. In the Gambia, two years ago, the coordinated joint action of the African Union, the Economic Community of West African States, and the United Nations and neighboring countries helped to prevent a political crisis and supported a peaceful, democratic political transition. In Madagascar, the United Nations worked in close coordination with the African Union, the Southern African Development Community, and the International Organization the, of the Francophonie, l'Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, to facilitate dialogue which contributed to peaceful presidential elections last month. And we hope that this cooperation will be maintained in the near future. When crisis broke out in Mali and the Central African Republic, the economic, the economic community of West African states and the economic community of Central African states were the first to deploy troops and engage in mediation efforts. And the African Union took over the operations, which later became United Nations peacekeeping operations. In Central Asia, the UN's Regional Center for Preventive Diplomacy for Central Asia supports regional dialogue and transboundary water management and promotes water diplomacy in close cooperation with national governments and the International Fund for Saving the Aral Sea. And in the aftermath of contested elections in Honduras in November 2017, the United Nations maintained close contact with the Organization of American States to extensions and facilitate dialogue. These efforts should and must be replicated elsewhere. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, that was the goal of the interactive high-level dialogue that I organized in June with the heads of various organizations, namely regional organizations, in order to study the ways and means to bolster our cooperation while particularly emphasizing prevention. I intend to continue this dialogue and to step up our cooperation with a view to contributing our expertise and support in order that we might establish stable and resilient societies. I also intend to draw upon the success of the joint frameworks adopted by the United Nations and the African Union. However, I also intend to draw inspiration from the other coordination mechanisms of other regions of the world. The reforms upon which I have embarked will help us to improve the coherence of our efforts. We must also help regional and sub-regional organizations to better anticipate crises and to take early prevention measures. The Early Warning and Response Network of ECOWAS, the network called ECOWAN, is an enlightening example of this. Mr. President, no state, no organization can alone overcome challenges currently facing us, whether we talk about climate change or inequalities. I therefore fear that current political trends, ambient pessimism and the lack of trust which we are noticing risk undermining multilateralism and the international rule-based order. I urge global leaders to renew their commitment to an in inclusive multilateralism focused on the Charter but also built around the principles of complementarity and subsidiarity. I also urge them to draw upon Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals and to see them as a universal action plan. The will to cooperate and to rapidly take action must manifest themselves as real, tangible results. Promoting prevention and resilience must be at the heart of our collective endeavours. I believe that we have the necessary know-how and resources to achieve these goals. We simply lack courage and political will. We must get everybody on board as we seek to build stable and resilient societies. We must work together with those in police positions of leadership. We must guarantee the full participation of women and harness the energy and creativity of young people. 
conflict prevention is a responsibility which we must all shoulder. Regional and sub-regional organisations play a key role in implementing a global and multi-dimensional strategy befitting of the challenges that we must overcome. Thank you.